sometimes I feel like they're lying to us. Most sketchbook tours are not sketchbooks, they are art books and there is a difference. Are you always comparing your sketchbooks to artists online and wondering why doesn't mine look this refined? Well in this video I'm going to talk to you about the difference between sketchbooks and art books and why you shouldn't be comparing your sketchbook to sketchbook tours on YouTube or other social media platforms. I'm also going to be showing you my beginner sketchbooks, the real beginner sketchbooks. I can find myself watching sketchbook tours on YouTube and wondering why doesn't my sketchbook look as together as this person's sketchbook? And then I have to remind myself that I'm not looking at a sketchbook tour, I'm looking at an art book tour and they are different. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I feel sometimes sketchbook tours, they can be really inspiring, but they can be also demotivating because we often find ourselves comparing our own work or our own sketchbooks to these sketchbooks that are much more refined. These sketchbook tours that you find plastered all over YouTube are not necessarily portraying a realistic view of that artist's practice pieces. It's a book of finished artworks. It's an art book. Let's go through what an art book is. Art books are filled with mostly finished pieces of art, or semi-finished. They're a portfolio of sorts. When the artist is making these sketchbooks, they are often making them with the knowledge that they are going to post them online. And this can make a real difference to how they're using that sketchbook. They're going to want to fill it with things that they want you to see. If they're making this sketchbook thinking that it's going to be seen by a lot of other people, they've then got that pressure to, to create, to, to make something good. Whereas when you have a sketchbook, there's not the same pressure. Most artists that are showing their art books online probably have another sketchbook. And that is the sketchbook that will be filled with rough drawings, practice pieces, thumbnails, concept ideas, that will be their sketchbook. And we don't always want to show our sketchbooks because that's where we're learning, that's where we're practicing and that's where we're getting our ideas together. So that takes us on to sketchbooks. Sketchbooks are the place to practice, to learn, to study, to get messy, to draft ideas, to refine concepts. They're a place to try new mediums, or they might be a visual journal, or something you do to distress. They may be somewhere you just like to play and be creative. And one of the big things I think that distinguishes them from an art book is that the focus is not to be posting it online. The focus is that learning and that creative exploration. So I would consider having both. You can have the best of both worlds. You can have a sketchbook and an art book. Your sketchbook has all of those messy concepts, all of that bad art that we're so afraid of making. And then your art book can be for those more refined finished pieces. You may be thinking, mm, what kind of sketchbooks should I use? Well, you don't have to save your best sketchbooks for your art book. Practicing on good quality sketchbooks is going to help you use your mediums to the best of their abilities. You don't have to save those sketchbooks for the special or for perfect or for these art books. You can practice in them. That's what you bought this sketchbook for. My uh, partner joked that I have a paper collection, um, possibly a paper addiction, and then when I actually looked, I think he's probably right. And I know most artists, creative people, have a stack of unused sketchbooks somewhere that they will get around to. But oftentimes we think, oh, you know, there's this lovely fresh page, this sketchbook is, is pure. I'm a bit scared to start it. And I think watching those videos online can be a bit of a hindrance and make a blank page with a sketchbook a little bit intimidating. So use that sketchbook. I mean, do you have an empty sketchbook collection or is that just me? Comment below. I might even even show you my stack of unused sketchbooks. A lot of people struggle with starting a sketchbook. They are almost worried they're going to ruin it by making their mark on the internet. 
a sketchbook's purpose is for you to explore your creativity and you cannot ruin it by drawing on it. Your sketchbook does not need to be perfect. Let's focus on letting go and get drawing, get writing, get painting. Those sketchbook tours that you are watching from artists on YouTube, they probably have that other sketchbook with those misshapen hands and eyes in the wrong place and weird colour mixing and skewed perspectives and messy pages, ink spills. They'll have them as well. They're just not posting them and that's, that's okay. But we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to these artworks that are being posted. So let's talk about our actual sketchbooks that are a bit messy. In your sketchbook, when you have created an ugly page, assess it, look at it, critique it. That is that is what it's for. It's for, it's for learning from. Have a look at what you could do differently. Have you drawn a face that's a bit misshapen? Do you need to study portraits and how to draw eyes, the nose, all of those things? You need to get back to basics. Are you drawing an urban landscape and you look at it and your perspectives are a bit off? What can you learn from your sketchbook? And once you're finished critiquing your artwork, have a look and a think about what do you actually like about this piece that you've created or this doodle or this practice? What have you learnt by doing it? Because every time you draw something or paint something, you are learning from it. And if you're critiquing your bad pages, they're not actually a bad page because you're learning from it. Now, a lot of artists really highly criticise their sketchbook tours, art book tours, and this can be quite demotivating because to us they might look immaculate, but we've got to remember we are all our own worst critics. So to them, they will see a lot of the flaws and imperfections because they know the time and effort that went into actually making that spread in that sketchbook. Now I'm going to show you some of my beginner sketchbooks. Personally, they bring me a deep sense of cringe, but like I said, that's because we're all our own worst critics. So something I'm going to be working on is trying not to compare myself to others online and to only compare myself to my previous self. So from what I start doing now, I can use these sketchbooks as a starting point. This is what I was drawing or painting like before I put the time and effort in to improve my skills. That's a much kinder and gentler approach. And it also makes us more inclined to pick up the pen, pick up the paintbrush and start being creative. Just starting the next page, don't think about the full sketchbook and having a finished art book at the end of it. Just think about showing up and you may even enjoy the process more. When we end up focusing on that end product so that end product mentality it can actually be a barrier to us starting in the first place so let's take a look at my cringe sketchbooks they're all quite different uh, this one is just i don't even know the brand um i think it was very very cheap the paper's very thin i just use this for practicing more the fundamental drawing this one is a homemade sketchbook, so I did the binding myself. The watercolour paper, I couldn't even tell you what it is. It was just a pad that I'd bought of, it might have been A1 paper that I cut down because I do that a lot because uh, it's cheaper than buying sketchbooks. And I wanted this just for practising in. And the third one is this small landscape, Stillman and Burn beta series. This one is probably the closest thing to an art book I tried to have and it's basically empty because I had that end product mentality with it. So jumping straight in, this sketchbook mainly has sketches based around a book that I followed called You Can Draw in 30 Days. I'll leave a link in the description. It started really from the basics. So you started off with spheres, then you moved on to cubes, focused on shadowing, foreshortening, all of those sort of fundamentals. Uh, I can see here this is actually from 2017, so a little bit earlier than I thought it was. Here it looks at texture and then it moves on to more curved objects. It was a really useful book actually. 
Uh, you can see the difference there um, from that house that I started with. That looks like something out of the Ghostbusters there. More object shapes. And you can see as they, they become more advanced as the days go on and then it moves on to perspective here. So one point and two point perspective, trying to show you the difference. Then I moved on to trying to draw faces, hands, a few sort of gestural figures, a naked man next to a banana, as you do. The mouth. I think this was actually from the next book in the series, which was You Can Draw in 30 Minutes. Here it turns more into my project sort of outlines and ideas. Uh, that house almost for my mum. It was, it was for an acrylic painting. There's just various various project ideas in here really. I'm just getting them down on the page and then developing them further. You can really see the difference here from the beginning house to this house a few days in. It's quite a big difference. So now moving on to my hand bound watercolour sketchbook. Again, this is a mix of watercolour and acrylic in various places. This was Inktober, maybe 2018. Various lodges. And then I moved on to different exercises in a book called Everyday Watercolour. Again, I'll leave a link to that in the description. You mainly drew lots of different fruits and vegetables. There were plants, different leaves, trees, all as a way of understanding different watercolour techniques and beginner water, watercolour techniques. Something I really liked about this book is that it, it gave me quite clear instructions on how to layer watercolours, um, sort of those splatter techniques and I mean, the subjects are quite are quite complicated for a beginner. And then I moved on to doing my own my own thing. So there's various poems in here. This spread is from A Day in London. There's different quotes. That bear was from a dream I had. Another urban sketching scheme there. A another poem from online. That was a, a drawing from from the pub. I think I used watercolor sticks there. Oh, oh, I did a I did a boot fair in 2018, and that was a bit of urban sketching from there as well. That was from a climbing trip again in 2018. So just when I had spare time. Here I'm just practicing watercolor clouds. This is from a trip up north. Same trip, but in the Lake District. And then I kind of swapped to just playing with acrylic paints, different landscape scenes, more poems tucked up on my typewriter. <laughs> I haven't got that now, I do miss it. Some quotes there and then just some more doodles. And then we move on to the Stillman and Burn little landscape watercolour book. This page I really wasn't happy with because I just smudged the water everywhere. I quite liked this one though. This was from a barn house in Norway. Again, this was from a walk in Norway. I was planning on finishing painting that. I didn't even draw anything there. And again, this was from a drive in Norway. I was going to paint that scene and the rest of this book is empty. And that's it for those sketchbooks. So now that you've seen my beginner sketchbooks, you may be wondering, what is this person making art videos on YouTube for? Well, this is a way of holding myself accountable for improving my artwork. Consider subscribing and liking this video. What am I going to do? I'm going to be practicing and improving my skills and I'm going to be sharing that journey here on YouTube. So I'm going to be posting about my self-taught artist program that's going to cover all of the fundamentals of drawing and then move on to watercolour and my aim is to really improve over the next two years so I want to see a real big change from then to now from now to then 
Thanks for watching. So, these are my three. Oh my god, this is going to take a long time to edit. And I have zero subscribers. So that's okay, because not many people are probably going to watch this. So I might as well just go with the flow. Just have a bit of fun. If you've enjoyed watching this video, consider liking and subscribing. You might even be my very first subscriber.